I love the ability that the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 3 lets me customize this machine for the way I sew. That also means that it can be customized for the way you sew. And I guarantee that our sewing styles are probably a little bit different. So we're gonna explore the settings area of this machine to learn what you can customize, change, adjust, and keep as permanent settings for this machine as you sit down each day. Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com and we're doing over 100 video tutorials on this beautiful machine. And we are giving you information that you can use on every sewing project. But as you wanna continue doing more, we have online courses such as our Embroidery Essentials course and our Stitching Cosmos course, and way up at the top, our Design Positioning course. We have links to all those courses in the description below and we always have free video lessons that you can watch to see if that course might be right for you. The settings menu is the little gear up here at the top and when we go into here we'll have options to do settings for the sewing side of the machine and the embroidery side, some of the ways you can personalize just the way the screen looks or uh, what comes up at the beginning of your turning on message at the beginning and it also will have the information about your machine and your Wi-Fi settings and your MySoNet account information. So let's just kind of go into each of these. As I touch on settings, you'll find a variety of things that have already been turned on for you, but there are times and places that I don't want these on. So at any given time, I can kind of toggle this off and that will then remove that feature. Uh, the presser foot lift, for example, if you notice that when your needle stops down, the foot always lifts up. Do you know you can actually turn that off? Yes, there is a time and place. I don't want that foot to lift, but I want my needle to stay in the down position. I don't want that fabric to have that pivoting option. And trust me, I do come in here and turn that off and on based on the project I'm working on. Uh, automatic thread cutter. There's times you've noticed that it just automatically cuts your thread and you're like, wait, I didn't want it to cut. And so you can actually control that feature as well. So like I said, this, these will be things that you'll want to explore, see if you really want them on all the time, see when you want to turn them off. So if something is bothering you about this machine, by the way, it's just doing something kind of out of your control. Believe me, somewhere in these settings is where you can actually turn it off. Once you turn it off, you will find that when you turn the machine off and back on, that setting will be remembered. So just kind of Keep that in mind. I know sometimes we do embroidery projects where we want, don't want the thread cutter on, like when I do my quilting projects, but then people are like, why isn't it cutting when they kind of get done with that project and move on to something else? And then they have to remember, oh yeah, I turned it off on the last project. Here is your free motion option settings where you can go in and set it for different types of free motion feet that you might be using. For the floating one, it also here is where you can adjust how uh, high it floats or how low it comes down on maybe something thinner. And then of course, if you have a gun into exploring ruler work, how you set up your ruler work height as well. So again, most of the time we leave that off, but that is uh, for when you do free motion. Um, stitch limiting options. Now, stitch width safety is something that we've always enjoyed when we put a straight stitch throat plate on. You do have one that comes with this machine and it is actually censored. So as soon as you put it on, the machine will automatically turn that feature, uh, stitch width safety feature on and you won't have to worry about it. But there might be a time and place you want it to not do a zigzag accidentally. I sometimes have my students turn that on when they put a quarter inch foot on. A quarter inch foot does not allow for zigzag, so if you accidentally pick that a zigzag stitch with a quarter inch foot on, you will notice that you will break your needle. But if you come in here and just toggle it on, even if you have not put the straight stitch throat plate on, you will make sure they don't accidentally break your needle. So there is a, a point of reasoning why that toggle switch is actually there. Twin needle, love, love twin needle work, especially when we get into our Stitching Cosmos online course and being able to select any size of twin needle. And I'm gonna actually pick one 
because when we come out of here, you're actually gonna notice that your stitches double up and you can see what they're gonna look like before you even pick them to stitch. They will sometimes even look like a totally different stitch than the actual one on screen. These are just, this one's my favorite. Uh, these are just the utility stitches. So can you imagine as we explore into some of the decorative stitches, how some of these will look for your twin needle functionality. So you can just like go, wow, I want to stitch that. Definitely enjoy going in to the sewing area and trying a twin needle. Needle stopping up or down, you can always have it so it's always down all the time, not just using the buttons that are on the front of your machine. Uh, Options for feed teeth or feed dogs. Um, I leave it on auto because as you go to different stitches, it will automatically go down when they need to go down, come back up when they need to come up, but you can override those and actually make sure they don't do that or do it when you want to do it. Tie off options, those are the immediate tie off options associated with the button on the front of your machine here, but you have where you can set it to always tie off at the beginning of a stitch, at the end of the stitch, and even add a thread cut option to that function. So every time you use it, it will also cut your thread. So if you just go in and do little check marks, those are a great feature. Let's just go back and explore some of the embroidery world of the settings. You will find you have options for which embroidery foot you're working with. Twin needle. Well, that's nice that we have that right there on the embroidery screen. Did you know you can use a twin needle with embroidery? Ha ha ha. That will be something you can explore as well. Thread cut options, automatic or automatic jump stitch trim. Maybe you don't want that. You can do it for just like thread cutter at the end or totally turn it off completely. Sometimes we need to adjust the embroidery height uh, if you need to. And so you have that customization. My hoops. Now this is something that's actually quite handy. As you know, Husqvarna Viking has a ton of embroidery hoops and they're all in this machine. So in when you pick up a design and you pull it on the screen, it will pick the hoop closest to the design size. Now, if you're noticing, it's always picking a hoop that you don't have. What you can do here is actually tell the machine which hoops you do own, and then it will only pick from those actual hoops. Now, the little catch is that if you pick a hoop and then they only show those hoops, when you buy a new hoop, you gotta, you gotta remember to go add it to your hoop list so the machine will allow you to select it. But this is a great way to customize and save that step of, wait, that's not the hoop I'm using. I need to always pick the, uh, the one I have. All right, so review embroidery settings before you proceed. If you want that message to go away, there's kind of that little setup. That is kind of nice. Um, you can actually turn that off. There you go, that's something I learned already. Camera and projector. So here are some options that you can set up for it to recognize the presser foot. We can adjust the camera. So if you haven't done this, you might just make sure your camera is pointing down to the exact part of your throat plate. And this little fine tuning adjustment section will show you step by step of how to do it. So if you are finding it's projecting and not stitching where you're thinking it's supposed to go, come in here and do that quick little adjustment. And you also have it for the projection area as well. So do go in if you haven't lately and check out that. Okay. As we jump down to display and personalization um, for um, audio, if you want to change the different things, I think I took the audio volume completely down. So as I touch different things, it is not chirping. Uh, that is something that I turn off just for videos, but you might enjoy having them so you know when you've actually selected something. Auto power off, this was in my last update, and now that I'm actually in here, but I've noticed that it's actually turning off after 20 minutes, which I don't want it to do. So I'm gonna actually switch that to never. I've noticed that that is, is a new feature. So they must have had requests for it. So there it is. But after an hour, it does turn off the machine and then you have to restart it. So whatever works for you. Let's talk about the units down here, millimeter and inches. So I know a lot of Americans like inches, which is great. Sometimes during embroidery, it might give you a better idea, like something six inches instead of 150 millimeters. But I will guide you that if you switch to inches, 
when you go out of here that your stitch width and length are probably numbers you're not going to recognize um, just because that that's the inch conversion. And honestly, you are actually used to millimeters with, with those settings, whether you knew it or not. So probably most of the time I, in the sewing world, I'm going to want to have it on metric, but you might switch it over to inches when you go to the uh, embroidery side. So if that's helpful for you, that is now part of this. Um, brightness of your work area, so you can get it to be brighter or not so bright as needed. And again, being able to pick your language and time format. Okay, here is our other areas of personalization. You can actually go in here and change the color of the screens, even adding what the machine's nickname is. So this will actually change what it comes up with on the home screen, and you can also do some other options here. So I'll let you explore, but it's kind of fun to go, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Wi-Fi settings, so if you have not set up your connectivity for your home Wi-Fi, if you go in here, up will come your available networks, just kind of like connecting anything that has a Wi-Fi option. And so I'm all set up at that already. And then we also have my SoNet, are you logged in? Do you have your free account? For this. Um, I am logged in, but if you weren't, you can see um, and do that just there. Machine information, this is handy if you are curious if you have the most current update. I also realized just yesterday that I have an update I need to run, so I currently am not even on the most current one, and so I'll want to do that update um, in between <laughs> all these videos that I'm doing. And who knows, there might be a few other things that show up after the most recent update. Okay, so make sure you keep your machine totally updated. Anytime there's an update, make sure you do it because it's probably making something just that much better. All right, settings. So anytime you need to adjust something, that little gear area will help you really fine tune what you need to have set up for the way you sew. We've got a link right here to all the other videos that we have done on the Husqvarna Viking Epic. So I hope you'll check those out as well. Thanks for watching.